Greetings everybody, this is Archangel McIntosh, aka Mika El Israel. I hope you all are having a wonderful now moment. Hope you are with yourself right now. Hope the Spirit of the Most High dwells within you at the moment. And within each moment, from moment to moment, and from time to time. This is part four to our decoding the calendar and the Hebrew Israelite feast days and the holy days and um, learning how to calculate time based on the um, moon, the, um, moon, the sun, and the stars. So we're going to go ahead and begin. I wanted to begin by reading this to you guys. The Watchman. But if the Watchman see the sword come, and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned. If the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. Ezekiel 3, um, pardon me, Ezekiel 33, section 6. Right, so let's go over here and um, let's finish off what we have. So um, this is Leviticus 23. We're going to learn about the feast now in the holy days. Let me make sure we got our map. We won't be needing these no more. We already got that all um, mapped out. There's actually a cool video that I'll share with you guys that... Um, that shows you how the tabernacle looks like real time and you know see it you know uh, uh from a 360 degrees view which is very nice so i'll show you guys that um by the end of this video now in this one but probably part five part five um will be just a uh, overview a wrap up um last touches you know last touch ups and stuff and whenever you need to learn anything you can just see that overview video from now on and if you want to learn everything in detail you can look at the videos one through five or six whatever it may be so leviticus 23 feast of the most high spirit and the most high spirit spoke unto moses saying speak unto the children of israel and say unto them concerning the feast of the most high which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations even these are my feast so the creator is trying to tell everyone to celebrate his feast and as you know a sabbath's on the seventh day so once again six days shall work be done but the seventh day is the sabbath of rest and holy convocation ye shall not work therein it is the sabbath of the most high spirit in all your dwellings and as you know, the new moon, third quarter moon, full moon, and first quarter moon would be um, the Sabbaths. They're the weekends. Weekend happen when it's one of those. So the next day after, the next sunrise after, that night, right after, is that day. It's Sabbath day, the seventh day, right at sunrise. Not at twelve. The Passover feast. So these are the feasts of the Most High Spirit, even holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. So once again, we're supposed to be proclaiming this throughout the, pardon me, around the seasons. And there's four seasons. There's um, spring. Oh, let me see if I have another view of it. Might be the only one I have so far, but I'm gonna be showing you guys some. Uh, pardon me, some pictures with anyways at the end. <laughs> pardon me. All right, I appreciate what I have. It's cool. 
So the four seasons you know would be um, spring. We spring into summer. Everything blossoms in summer. And then, pardon me. And then, and then we fall into winter. Pardon me, guys. Something's making me sneeze right now and stuff. So I'm over here being interrupted. So we spring into summer. And then we fall into winter. Four cycles. Four seasons. Just like the four major phases of the moon that represents Sabbath. So it all correlates. It's very simple. Everything was... Um, one thing meant many things all in one. And when you can put the zodiac sign into all this, it makes a lot more sense. A lot more sense. So we have Nissan. E Ia Sivan Tamamuz Ab Ilul Chishri Heshvan Shishlev Tebet Shebat Adar Vyada And we may get into knowing how to say it in Hebrew. We may. We'll see. And these are the seasons that they have up here. All the seasons. So all together, I mean the um, holy days. Pardon me, the holy days. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Just about 11 or 12. Yep, wait. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Plus the weekly Sabbaths. Plus the weekly Sabbaths. So the weekly Sabbaths in the whole month. There would be... About 28. All right, pardon me. Let me, let me, hold on. Let me see. Okay, so there's four weeks in a month in the Hebrew calendar. There's four weeks in a month. Four weeks, sometimes a day and a half or another day. So four weeks times 12. So yeah, that would be 48. So there's about 48 days. Hold on. Yeah, so it would be about 48 days in the whole year. Yeah, so there's about 48, 48 days in one year. Not 48 days, but 40, um, 48 weeks, pardon me. 48 weeks in a year. 48 weeks, and each um, week is 7 days. It's not you times 48 times 7. Let me go ahead and get my little calculator up. up. 48 times 7. So we have 336 days in a whole um, in a whole cycle. And I believe there's something um, that happens because of the leap year, the Vedar. All right, so let's go ahead and continue. So six days shall work, work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest and holy convocation. Ye shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Most High in all your dwellings, the Passover feast. These are the feasts of the Lord, the Most High, even holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. And the fourteenth day of the first moon, of the first new moon, at evening is the Most High's Passover. So by evening, when the, when the um, sun's all the way at its peak in the sky, from the time 
six hours from the time it rose. That will be Passover in the 14th day of the first month. So the first month will be um, Aviv, Abib. Right here, Abib, Nisan. So 14th day, like it says right here, 14th day. So what you would do, you calculate 14 days, 14 nights from the new moon. You see what I'm saying? Based on the moon though, don't get caught up in the human um, days and all that stuff, but get caught up on the days of, of the, the natural earth itself, the sky, the celestials, the heavens. You see? So days, which may be 14 days. There's 14 days, but they weren't. There's not 15 nights. There's actually 13 nights in the the la the the first day that comes up represents the end of everything. So it's light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, light. It starts with light. It ends with light. So the 14th, the uh, in the first, the 14th day of the first month is Passover, as I'm showing you right here, which is coming up soon. And by the way, there's a cool website you can go to to um, check out what moon phase we're in. If you want to do it online and you're not out right now, it's uh, Moon Day, the second day in the, of the week, just past 617, 618. Um, actually, it's 918. My, the time is wrong on my computer. Uh, the the moon is 20% full. This is what they call a waning crescent, which means it's going down. And, um, yeah, so now I can tell, like, there's almost going to be a new moon eventually because this whole thing is going to turn black. Like in this picture right here, right here where I'm pointing, which would represent a new month. So that new month for us, because we're around February... That would bring us around here, around this area right here, spring. So it's going to be March soon, and then we're going to go through a leap year, which is important to know as well. All right, so let's go ahead and continue on. And on the 15th day of the same month, the 15th day now. You have the 14th. Now is the 15th. The, the day after. Is the feast of unleavened bread. Unto the most high. Ahaya. And these are not Sabbaths. But they are they are Sabbaths. They're, they're days of celebrating. Because that's what Sabbath means. A day of worship and celebrating. Um, oh yeah it is. So before these days come. You have to cook the food. Days before the festival and everything days before the feast, you know what I'm saying and get them ready But we'll see the most high will let us know what we need to know. So let's follow follow command So at evening would be um, Passover when everything's passing over into the new time Like Christ Yeshua had passed over unto the spiritual world around that time and rose up three days later so on the 15th day of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread unto the most high Ahaya. seven days ye, ye must eat unleavened bread so for seven days starting on the 15th day of Nisan Abib Aviv and the first day Ye shall have an holy convocation. So in the first day, ye shall have an holy convocation. Which would mean after the seven days. Ye shall do no servile work therein. But ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Most High Ahaya. Seven days. And the seventh day is an holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. So that means we'll be giving an offering for seven days. It would explain to us too in detail what it means. The feast of first fruits. And the Most High Spirit spoke, spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Yesharalah, and speak unto them. When ye, be, when ye be come into the land which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest thereof. 
then ye shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits. So when ye be come into the land which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest thereof of the, the, the fruits that you grow and everything, then ye shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest and unto the priest. So you're going to bring all your first fruits of the fruits, all the fruits that was there first to the priest. And he shall wave the sheaf before the Most High Ahiah to be accepted for you. On the morrow, after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. So on tomorrow, after the Sabbath, because you can't work on the Sabbath, so that means there will be a Sabbath before the day of um, first fruit. So let's go ahead and check it out. So the offering of first fruit will be on the 16th. So let's calculate. So the new moon, new month would represent um, would represent spring because this is the time when all this began to happen. So around spring, let me see, there's seven days in a week, and okay, so it'll be two weeks from the first month, pretty much, seven plus seven, 14, that would be Passover. So, okay, so on that, oh, I see exactly what they're saying, so on that day, it's actually a Sabbath on the 14th, it would be a Sabbath on the 14th. So Sabbath is actually right on Passover day. Wow. Wow. So all these would be Sabbath. So after the 16th, then you would begin everything. Because all these celebrations are Sabbath days. So and he shall wave the sheaf before the Most High to be accepted for you. Um, tomorrow, after the Sabbath... The priest, priest shall wave it. Okay, so that was the directions, and, and he's going to do it the next day. And ye shall offer that day when ye wave the sheaf of he lamb without blemish of the first year for a burnt offering unto the Most High. So the first fruit of your goats, your lambs, all that um, must be given to Most High as the burnt offering. And the meat offering thereof shall be two tenth deals of fine flour mingled with pure olive oil. An offering made by fire unto the Most High Ahia for sweet savour. And the drink offering thereof shall be of fine wine. The fourth part of an hen. And ye shall... So that's the measurement of how much. And ye shall eat neither bread, nor parched corn, nor green ears, until the self same day that ye have brought an offering unto your spirit, the Most High. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. So that's the festival of the first fruit. So we have the Passover feast, the weekly feast, the feast of the uh, Most High, which is the weekly feast. There's actually a name for it. We'll learn it a little later. Alright, I believe this is it right here. The Feast of Pentecost. And ye shall count unto you from the tomorrow, after the Sabbath, from the day that ye brought the sheaf of the wave offering. Seven Sabbaths shall be complete. Even unto the morrow, after the seventh Sabbath, shall ye number fifty days. So after the Sabbath, we will calculate fifty days. And ye shall offer a new meat offering unto the Most High Ahia. Ye shall bring out of your habitations two wave loaves of two tenth deals. Then shall be a fine flour without yeast. Then shall be bacon with, oh, actually this one is with yeast. They shall be bacon with leaven, with yeast. They are the first fruits unto the Most High Ahia. So, all right, so you're going to be burning these ones anyways. They're the first fruit. 
So 50 days after the Sabbath, the Creator tells us to count. So 50 days after the Sabbath, So I'd be like three months later. Yeah. But I, yeah, it was actually two right here. So it'll be around May and June. Sivan. Now you can go ahead and calculate it if you want to. You know, there's twenty there's mainly twenty-eight days in a month. Twenty-eight days in a month. And count 50 50 days so yeah that'll probably be like a month and a half kind of you see and that should probably be a sabbath day as well it might fall on a full moon new moon or half moon who knows you know you'll know and that's on the sixth on the sixth day of see um sivan the sixth day of sivan which would actually be the day before um, Sabbath. Or on the day of Sabbath. Depending on where the moon's at that time. So, and ye shall offer with the bread seven lambs without blemish of the first year. And one young bullock and two rams. They shall be for a burnt offering unto the Most High, Ahia with their meat offering and their drink offerings, even an offering made by fire, a sweet savor unto the Most High Ahia. Then ye shall sacrifice one kind, one kid of the goats, one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and two lambs of the first year for a sacrifice of peace offerings. So two lambs, and when he go and the priest shall wave them with the bread of the first fruits for a wave offering before the most high with the two with the two lambs they shall be holy to the most high spirit for the priests and ye shall proclaim on the self same day that it may be an holy convocation unto you unto you ye shall do no servile work therein so on the day you're not going to be doing any work. All the work should be done before these days. Alright. It shall be a statute forever in all your dwellings throughout your generations. And when ye reap the harvest of your land. Thou shalt not make clean riddance of the corners of thy field when thou reapest so thou shalt not make clean riddance of the corners of the thy field leave the field the way it is don't clean that in when thou reapest neither shalt thou gather any gleaning of thy harvest thou shalt leave them unto the poor and to the stranger i am the most high your spirit the feast of trumpets and the most high ahiah spoke unto moses saying speak unto the children of israel saying in the seventh month now seven 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 in the first day of the new moon of the if of the moon the month shall ye have a sabbath a memorial of blowing of trumpets and holy convocation ye shall do no servile work therein but ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Most High Ahia. Which means they had the fire burning since the day before. Remember it told us that in Exodus to keep the fire burning overnight. And put enough sticks in it so it can burn for the whole convocation. You see what I'm saying? I'm not sure like um, if it would be work if they had... Um, if they had the sticks where they need them like right next to them. But if they're having to carry the sticks... In and out, in and out, in and out like that and stuff, you know, then it's work. So you can't be working on that day at all. You have to find a way to do everything without having to work that day other than the offerings, which is all, the, which is the, the most high controlling you anyways to do that, which is what you want to achieve that day. It's to allow the most high to control you and to use you that day. 
You see? Alright, let's continue. The Day of Atonement. And the Most High spoke, spoke unto Moses, saying, So the seventh, on the first day of the seventh month, would be right here. Hold on, where's the picture? Right down here. Tishri. So we have Nisan, Sivan, and Tishri. Itanim. Itanim. So you have on the first day, trumpet blast. Trumpet blast. Trumpet blast. The day of atonement. And the Most High Yahya spoke unto Moses, saying, Also, on the tenth day of this seventh month, new moon, there shall be a day, sunrise, of atonement. It shall be an holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls, and offer an offering made by fire unto the Most High Ahiah, and ye shall do no work in that same day. Afflict mean fast. For it, for it is a day of atonement, to make an atonement um, for you before the Most High Ahiah, your Creator. For whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. And whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in, the, in that same day, the same soul will I destroy from among his people. And guess how much people forgot these holidays and don't celebrate them. A lot of crazy stuff's going to happen to them. Ye shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. It shall be unto you a Sabbath, a Shabbat of rest, and ye shall afflict your souls fast. In the ninth day of the month, so this right here is happening on the seventh day of the month. Feast of Trumpets on the first day of the month. So the Creator said, in the ninth day of the of the new moon of the new moon the, the of the month at even at evening when the sun's at the center of the sky from evening unto evening shall ye celebrate your sabbath so all right so that's on the seventh day all right so on the ninth day So seven, eight, nine, which will be two days later, we shall celebrate another Sabbath. So hold on, let's go ahead and check that out. So that would be the Day of Atonement. That's on the 10th Day of Atonement. From evening to evening. From evening to evening. Hold on, let me go back to it real quick. All right, so it shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest, and ye shall afflict your souls fast. And the ninth day of the new moon, at even, evening, from evening unto evening, shall ye celebrate your Shabbat. So on the ninth day, from evening to evening, we're going to celebrate our Sabbath. Celebrate, which means eat and celebrate and all that stuff. The Feast of Boots. And the Most High spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Yesharalah, saying, The fifteenth day of that seventh month still, fifteenth day of that month, shall be the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days unto the Most High Ahia. So that's going to last for seven days, seven day festival. On the first day shall be a holy convocation. So on the first day would be when we're doing a, 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 a set, a, which you call it, pretty much a session. Yeah, pretty much a session with the book, with the Holy Bible. 
ye shall do no servile work therein. Seven days ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Most High Ahia. On the eighth day shall be in holy convocation unto you. So on the first day will be a holy convocation for the Most High. On the eighth day it will be it will be for you. And ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Most High Ahia. It is a solemn assembly. And ye shall do no servile work therein. So before the ninth day, you and before the eighth day. Wait, hold on. Let me see. So seven days ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Most High Ahia. On the first day you wouldn't do any work, but the second day you you can do work. Third day you can do work. Fourth day you can do work. Five, fifth day, six. You're supposed to be resting on the seventh, but I don't know if I'm calculating this right anyway. But on the seventh day, you're supposed to be resting, and they say the eighth day shall be in holy convocation unto you, and ye shall make an offering to the Most High. It is a so so solemn assembly, and ye shall do no servile work therein. So, I gotta decode that a little bit more later on, but you probably get it, and I'm probably gonna get it after I look back at this video. But let's continue though. These are the feasts of the Most High Spirit, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations. I proclaim that these are holy convocations. To offer an offering made by fire unto the Most High Ahia, a burnt offering and a meat offering, a sacrifice and drink offerings, everything upon his day, beside the Sabbaths of the Most High, and besides your gifts, and beside all your vows. Because we're making vows here. And beside all your free will offerings, which ye give unto the Most High Ahia. Also, in the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when ye have gathered in the fruit of the land. Because that's when we're supposed to be gathering the fruit. Around fall. Because everything's starting to fall. Plowing. So they called the festival of boots the festival of ingathering. Alright, so let's go ahead and continue. Alright, so also in the 15th day of the 7th moon, new moon of the 7th month. When ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, ye shall keep a feast unto the Most High Spirit seven days. On the first day shall be a Sabbath, a Shabbat, and on the eighth day shall be a Shabbat. So the eighth day and the first day, not the seventh. But that's part because that's how the moon is on that day. That means there's an extra day in that month. Matter of fact, and I think that's what that means. That there's eight days in that month. Eight weeks. Eight days in a week in that month. And ye shall take you on the first day. The boughs of goodly trees. Branches of palm trees. And the boughs of thick trees. And willows of the brook. And ye shall rejoice before the Most High Spirit. Your creator. Seven days. And ye shall keep it a Keep it a feast unto the Most High Ahia seven days in the year. So when ye shall keep it a feast unto the Most High Ahia seven days of the year. And ye shall rejoice before the Most High Ahia, your Creator, for seven days. And ye shall take you on the first day the boughs of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and the boughs of thick trees and willows of the brook. And ye shall rejoice. It shall be a statute forever in your generations. Ye shall celebrate it in the seventh month. Ye shall dwell in booths seven days. All that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths. 
that your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in boots when I brought them out of the land of Egypt, Kemet. I am the Most High, your Creator. And Moses declared unto the children of Israel the feast of the Most High. So there's one, two, three. Wait, hold on. Let me fix this up. Because we're going to need this to do our wrap up. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep. So seven again. Seven holy days to celebrate. Seven days in a week. Unless eight sometimes. Takes seven months from the first month until we're halfway through the month. That's why it's uh, halfway through the year. That's why Tishri is right across from Passover. So it's the parallel of Nisan, Abib, the time of Passover. And hold on one sec. And that's pretty much it for that one. We're going to go ahead and continue reading. All right, so Leviticus 24, the oil for the lamps. And the Most High Spirit spoke unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel that they bring unto thee pure olive oil beaten for the light, to cause the lamps to burn continually, without the veil of the testimony, and the tabernacle of the congregation shall Aaron order it from the evening unto the morning unto the sunrise before the Most High continually. It shall be a statute forever in your generations. He shall order the lamps upon the pure candlestick before the Most High continually. So shall Aaron order it from the evening. The evening before the night of the day before. Before the moon goes up and tells us, Hey, tomorrow we're having a Sabbath. You know, so unto that actual day, which will be the sunrise, before the Most High continually. So he shall order the lamps upon the pure candlestick before the Most High continually, the showbread. And thou shalt take fine flour and bake twelve cakes thereof. Two tenth deals shall be in one cake, two tenths in measure shall be in one cake and thou shalt set them in two rows six on a row twelve total upon the pure table before the most high higher and thou shalt put pure frankincense upon each row that it may be on the bread for a memorial even an offering made by fire unto the most high even sabbath he shall set it in order before the Most High continually, being taken from the children of Israel by an everlasting covenant, and it shall be Aaron's and his sons, and they shall eat it in the holy place, for it is ho most holy unto him of the offerings of the Most High, made by fire, by a perpetual statute. So Shelomet's son blasphemes. All right, let me see. I don't know. We may not even need to see this. Wow. So the creator was saying to stone anyone who blasphemies the creator's name on that day or anything like that. Um, and actually, if they do anything sinful against the creator that day or lay a hand or work or anything for them to be put to death. Now this has kind of been changed through the blood of Christ. All our sins and transgressions has been forgave. So now we shall not judge. The creator will. So, But back then, yeah, they'll stone you to death, put you to death and things like that. If you um, broke these laws. So keep you in line. Alright, so, so that was Leviticus 24, section 10.
Leviticus 24, section 17 states, And he that killeth any man shall surely be put to death, and he that killeth a beast shall make it good, beast for beast. And if a man cause a blemish in his neighbor, as he hath done, so shall it be done to him. So if you put a mark on someone or hurt someone, breach for breach, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, as he hath caused the blemish in a man, so shall it be done to him again. And he that killeth the beast, he shall restore it. And he that killeth the man, he shall be put to death. Ye shall have one manner of law, as well for the stranger, as for one of your own country. For I am, Ahaya, sure, Ahaya, almighty I am. And Moses spoke to the children of Israel, that they that they should bring forth him that had cursed out of the camp and stone him with stones. And the children of Israel did as the Most High Ahia commanded Moses. So you can go ahead and read that if you want to. We're almost complete. So Leviticus 25, the Sabbatic year. And the Most High Ahia spoke unto Moses in Mount Sinai, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, when ye come into the land which I give you, which I lend you, which I borrow you, then shall the land keep a Sabbath unto the Most High. Six years thou shalt sow thy field, and six years thou shalt prune thy vineyard, and gather in the fruit thereof. But in the seventh year shall, shall be a Sabbath of rest unto the land, a Sabbath for the Most High Ahia. Thou shalt neither sow thy field, nor prune thine vineyard. So this is every Sabbath year. That which groweth of its own accord of thy harvest, thou shalt not reap, neither gather the grapes of thy vine undressed. So no plucking your, your food, none of that on that day. For it is a year of rest unto the land, and the Sabbath of the, of the land shall be meat for you, for thee, and for thy servant, and for thy maid, and for thy hired servant, and for thy stranger that sojourneth with thee, and for thy cattle, and for the beasts that are in thy land, shall all the increase thereof be meat. The year of Jubilee. So let's go ahead and see our little calendar right here. All right, Festival of Dedication. I didn't hear much about that. Solemn Assembly, we heard that. Festival of Boots, Day of Atonement, Trumpets Blast. Festival of Pentecost. Okay, they put a late Passover in here. I don't know all. Oh, okay, so they said Numbers 9, Section 10. Through 13 we'll already see that anyway okay I get it so there's barley wheat early figs first grapes summer fruits um grapes figs dates grapes and figs plowing olives flocks wintered vegetation developing Almond blossoms, citrus, and barley, and all that again. So these are all the things we used to use. So the year of Jubilee. And thou shalt number seven Sabbaths of years unto thee, seven times seven years. And the space of the seven Sabbaths of years shall be unto thee forty and nine years years 49 years so every 49 years then shalt thou cause the trumpet of the jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month and the day of atonement shall ye make the trumpet sound throughout all your land and ye shall hollow the fifteenth year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof it shall be a jubilee unto you and ye shall return every man unto his possession, 
and ye shall return every man unto his family. A jubilee shall that fifteenth year be unto you. Ye shall not sow, neither reap that which groweth of itself in it, nor gather the grapes in it of thy vineyard undressed. For it is the jubilee, it shall be holy unto you. Ye shall eat the increase thereof out of the field. So return of property on a day of jubilee. And the year of this jubilee, which is the seventh year. So we have yearly um, Sabbaths. Every seven years. And um, every one year. Yeah, actually, every um, seven years, actually. Every seven years. So every seven years, every 15 years, which will be jubilee. And let's continue. And the year of this jubilee, ye shall return every man unto his possession. And if thou sell out um, aught unto thy neighbor, or buyest aught of thy neighbor's hand, so if you sell out unto your neighbor, sell to your neighbor, or buy from your neighbor's hand, ye shall not oppress one another. According to the number of years after the jubilee, thou shalt buy of thy neighbor. And according unto the number of years of the fruit, he shall sell unto thee. According to the multitude of years, thou shalt increase the price thereof. And according to the fewness of years, thou shalt diminish the price of it. For according to the number of the years of the fruits, do, do he sell unto thee. Ye shall not therefore oppress one another, but thou shalt fear the Most High Spirit, for I am the Most High, your Creator. So we're supposed to be released from prison and all types of stuff, slavery, bondage, every seven years. Seven years was like the max where someone worked for you. After seven, everything starts all over. You're free. That's why we proclaim freedom and liberty around that time. And that's Leviticus 25, section 8. So the blessing of obedience. Wherefore, ye shall do my statutes and keep my judgments and do them. And ye shall dwell in the land in safety. And the land shall yield her fruit. And ye shall eat your fill. And dwell therein in safety. And if ye shall, and if ye shall say, What shall we eat the seventh year? Behold, we shall not sow nor gather in our increase on the seventh year. Then I will command my blessing upon you in the sixth year. And it shall bring forth fruit for three years. And ye shall sow the eighth year and eat yet of old fruit until the ninth year. Until her fruits come in, ye shall eat of the old store. All right, let's continue. The law of redemption. The land shall not be sold forever, for the land is mine, spirit. I am that I am. For ye are strangers and sojourners with me, and in all the land of your possession ye shall grant a redemption for the land. If thy brother be waxen poor, and hath sold away some of his possession, and if any of his kin come to redeem it, then shall, shall he redeem that which his brother sold. And if the man have, one, have none to redeem it, and himself be able to redeem it, then let him count the years of the sale thereof, seven years, and restore the overplus unto the man to whom he sold it, the interest, that he may return unto his possession. But if he be not able to restore it to him, then that which is sold shall remain in the hand of him that hath bought it until the year of jubilee. And in the jubilee it shall go out, and he shall return unto his possession. And if a man sell a dwelling house in a walled city, then he may redeem it within a whole year after it is sold. Within a full year may he redeem it. Whatever house you have dwelling within a walled city, 
And if it be not redeemed within the space of a full year, then the house that is in the walled city shall be established forever to him that bought it throughout his generations. It shall not go out in the jubilee. But the houses of the villages which have no wall round, round about them shall be counted as the fields of the country. So but the houses of the villages with which have no wall round about them shall be counted as the fields of the country. They may be redeemed, and they shall go out in the jubilee. Notwithstanding the cities of the Levites, the Haitians, and the houses of the cities of their possession, may the Levites redeem at any time. And if a man purchase of the Levites, then the house that was sold, and the city of his possession, shall go out in the year of jubilee. For the houses of the cities of the Levites are their possession among the children of Israel. But the field of the um, suburbs of their cities may not be sold, for it is their perpetual possession. So redemption of the poor. So we all should be able to be redeemed. Leviticus 25, section 35. And if thy brother be waxen poor, and fallen in decay with thee, then thou shalt relieve him. Yeah, though he be a stranger or a sojourner, that he may live with thee. That thou no usury, take, no, take thou no usury of him, so don't use him, or increase. But fear the Most High Spirit, that is your Creator, that thy brother may live with thee, so you can live with your brother in harmony. Thou shalt not give him thy money upon usury, nor lend him thy um, victuals for increase. I am the Most High Ahaya, your ultimate spirit, which brought you forth out of the land of Kemet, Egypt, to give you the land of Canaan, and to be your creator. Redemption of Bondmen And if thy brother that dwelleth by thee be waxen poor, and be sold unto thee, thou shalt not compel him to serve as a bond servant, but as a hired servant, and as a sojourner. He shall be with thee, and shall serve thee unto the year of Jubilee, and then shall he depart from thee, both he and his children with him, and shall return unto him, and, er and shall return unto his own family, and unto the possession of his fathers shall he return. So most contracts are null and void. They're illegal. You know it's against our um, contract with the Creator. For they are my servants which I brought forth out of the land of Egypt. They shall not be sold as bondmen. Thou shalt not rule over them with rigor, but shalt fear the Most High Spirit. Both thy bondmen and thy bondmaids, which thou shalt have, shall be of the heathen that are round about you. Of them shall ye buy bondmen and bondmaids. Moreover, of the children of the strangers that do sojourn, sojourn among you, of them shall ye buy, and of their families that are with you, which they begot in your land, which they had in your land. And they shall be your possession, and ye shall take them as an inheritance for your children after you, to inherit them for a possession. They shall be your bondmen forever, but over your brethren, the children of Israel. Ye shall not rule one over another with rigor, though. Redemption of Servants And if a sojourner or stranger wax rich by thee, and thy brother that dwelleth by him wax poor, and sell himself unto the stranger or sojourner by thee, or to the stock of the stranger's family. After that he is sold, he may be, be, he may be redeemed again, like the birth certificate Social Security. One of his brethren may redeem him, either his uncle or his uncle's son may redeem him, or any that is nigh of kin unto him of his family may redeem him, or if he be able, he may redeem himself. And he shall reckon with him that brought him from the year that he was sold to him unto the year of Jubilee. And the price of his sale shall be according unto the number of years. 
according to the time of an hired servant shall it be with them with him if there be yet many years behind according unto them he shall give again the price of his redemption out of the money that he was bought for and if there remain but few years unto the year of jubilee then he shall count with him and according unto his years shall he give him again the price of his redemption so what is the price to free myself what is the price to free myself if you're not going to take a price you have to free me by um um jubilee the 15th year i mean yeah by the um 15th year or 7th year actually it is the 7th year pardon me dun, 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 dun. yep the 7th year the 10th day of the 7th year the 10th day of the 7th year I mean pardon me the 10th day of the 7th month the 10th day of the 7th month for 7 sabbaths of years so seven years so sh that shall be wait and thou shalt number seven sabbaths of years unto thee seven times seven years and the space of the seven sabbaths of years shall be unto thee forty and nine years so for forty nine years another jubilee but all right let's go ahead and continue All right, so if he don't buy him and give him a price for the re his redemption to free himself, and as a yearly hired servant, shall he be with him? And the other shall not rule with rigor over him in thy sight. And if he be not redeemed in these years, then he shall go out in the year of Jubilee. So if he can't buy himself out of slavery, then he's released seven, um, seven years. For, for On the seventh year, he's been working both he and his children with him for unto me the children of israel are servants they are my servants whom i brought forth out of the land of oppression i am ahiah sure ahiah your all almighty i am presence spirit all right these are the last two we have here so now this is what we get for following the commandment and, and if we don't and I believe this okay so after that would be one more all right so let's go ahead and do that up so Leviticus 26 the blessings of obedience ye shall make you no idols nor graven image neither rear, rear you up a standing image Neither shall ye set up any image of stone in your land to bow down unto it. For I am the Most High, Ahia, your Creator. Ye shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. I am pure white light spirit. If ye walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, then I will give you rain in due season, and the land shall yield her increase. And the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. And your threshing shall reach unto the vintage. And the vintage shall reach unto the sowing time. And ye shall eat your bread to the full. And dwell in your land safely. And I will give peace in the land. And ye shall lie down and none shall make you afraid. I will rid evil beasts out of the land. Neither shall the sword go through your land. And ye shall taste your enemies. And they shall fall before you by the sword. And five of you shall chase an hundred, and a hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight, and your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. For I will have respect unto you, and make you fruitful, and multiply you, and establish my covenant with you here now and present. And ye shall eat, and ye shall eat, O store, and bring forth the old because of the new. And I will set my tabernacle among you, and, and my soul shall not abhor you. And I will walk among you, and be your most high. I am that I am, spirit. And ye shall be my people. I am, Ahiah, sure, Ahiah, your creator, which brought you forth out of the land of oppression and darkness, that ye should not be their bondmen, 
and I have broken the bands of your yoke and made you go upright. So punishments for disobedience. But if ye will not hearken unto me and will not do all these commandments, and if ye shall despise my statutes, or if your soul abhor my judgments, so that ye will not do all my commandments, but that ye break my covenant, I will also do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption, and the burning agony that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart. And ye shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. And I will set my face against you, and ye shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you shall reign over you, and ye shall flee when, when none pursueth you. And if ye will not yet for all this... And if ye will not yet for all this hearken unto me, listen to me, hear me, use your heart and listen to me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins, and I will break the pride of your power, and I will make your heaven as iron, and your earth as brass, and your strength shall be spent in vain, for your land shall not yield her increase, neither shall the trees of the land yield their fruits. And if ye walk contrary unto me, spirit, and will not hearken unto me, spirit, I will bring seven times more plagues upon you according to your sins. I will also send wild beasts among you, which shall rob you of your children, and destroy your cattle, and make you few in number, and your highways shall be desolate. And if ye will not be reformed by me by these things, but will walk contrary unto me, spirit, then I will also walk contrary to you, flesh, and will punish you yet seven times for your sins, wrongdoings, and that are divine torts. And I will bring a sword upon you that shall avenge the quarrel of my covenant. And when ye are gathered together within your cities, I will send the pestilence among you, and, you sh and ye shall be delivered into the hand of the enemy. And when I have broken the staff of your bread, ten women shall bake your bread, and one oven and they shall deliver you your bread again by weight and ye shall eat and not be satisfied and if ye will not for all this hearken unto me spirit but walk contrary unto me spirit then I will con walk contrary unto you also in fury and I even I will chastise you seven times for your sins and ye shall eat the flesh of your sons and the flesh of your daughters shall ye eat and I will destroy your high places, and cut down your images, and cast your carcasses upon the carcasses of your idols. And my soul shall abhor you, and I will make your cities waste, and bring your sanctuaries into desolation. And I will not smell the savor of your sweet odors, and I will bring the land into desolation, and your enemies which dwell therein shall be astonished at it. And I will scatter you among the heathen, and will draw out a sword after you, Islam and your land shall be desolate, and your cities waste. Then shall the land enjoy her Sabbaths, as long as it lieth desolate, empty, void, and ye be in your enemy's land. Even then shall the land rest and enjoy her Sabbaths. As long as it lieth desolate, it shall rest, because it did not rest in your Sabbaths, when ye dwelt upon it. And upon them that are left alive of you, I will send a faintness into their hearts in the lands of their enemies, and the sound of a shaken leaf shall chase them, and they shall flee, as fleeing from a sword, Islam, Muslim, Jihad, Sharia Allah. And they shall fall when none pursue it, and they shall fall one upon another, as it were before a sword, when none pursue it. And ye shall have no power to stand before your enemies, and ye shall perish among the heathen, and the land of your enemies shall eat you up. And they that are left of you shall pine away in their iniquity, in your enemies' land. And also in the iniquities of their fathers shall they pine away with them. Ahaya remembers those who repent. Leviticus 26, section 40. If they shall confess their iniquity in the iniquity of their fathers, forefathers, and with their trespass, which they trespassed against me, and that also they have walked contrary unto me, and that I also have walked contrary unto them, and have brought them into the land of their enemies, oppression, 
if then their uncircumcised heart be humbled, and they then accept of the punishment of their iniquity, then will I remember my covenant with Jacob, so accept the punishment of our iniquity. Accept the punishment of our iniquities. Accept the punishment of our iniquities. Accept the punishment of our iniquities. So then will I remember my covenant with Jacob, and also my covenant with Isaac, and also my covenant with Abraham. Will I remember? And I will remember the land. The land also shall be left of them, and shall enjoy her Shabbat. While she lieth desolate without, without them, and they shall accept of the punishment of their iniquity. Because even because they despise my judgment, and because their soul abhorred my statutes, and yet for all that, when they be in the land of their enemies, I will not cast them away, neither will I abhor them, to destroy them utterly, and to break my covenant with them. For I am their spirit. But I will for their sakes remember the covenant of their ancestors, whom I brought forth out of the land of oppression and darkness in the sight of the heathen, that I might be their almighty pure white light, Ahaya, sure, Ahaya. I am Ahaya, sure, Ahaya, the Most High. These are the statutes and judgments and laws which the Most High made between him and the children of Israel in Mount Sinai by the hand of Moses. So if you want to join us Gentiles or anyone who want to convert, um, you would have to believe what we believe in. And I, and I say this not to make you feel bad, but if you accept that you're a Gentile and um, you're converting to our belief or converting to the Most High's original belief, not our belief, but the Most High's belief, then you can become one of us. But before you do that, you have to see the ones who did it already and had success with it, which was the 12 tribes of Israel. But everyone is chosen by the Most High, not just one group. Matter of fact, we're all children of Israel, to tell you the truth. That's just my belief, although that's maybe not what the Creator had in mind. Alright, let me see something. I'm going to go ahead. I don't need none of those. Alright, so Leviticus 27. Let's see if we need to read this. Okay, this is probably how much it was going to cost them for the Sabbath. Alright, if you want to read Leviticus 27, Rules About Valuations, I'm going to go ahead and continue on from Instructions on Tithes. And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land, or of the fruit of the tree, is the Most High's. It is holy unto the Most High. And if a man with and if a man will at all redeem out of his tithes, he shall add thereto the fifth part thereof. So if anyone take out the tithes of the most high, they will have to redeem a fifth part to it thereof in interest plus what they took. So in concerning the fifth of the herd or of the flock, even of whatsoever passeth under the rod, the tenth shall be holy unto the Most High Ahia. He shall not search whether it be good or bad, neither shall, the, ni neither shall he change it. And if he change it at all, then both it and the change thereof shall be holy. It shall not be redeemed. These are the commandments which the Most High Ahia commanded Moses for the children of Israel in Mount Sinai. So thank you so much for sticking with me all the way to this end, guys. Thank you so much. So we're going to go ahead and continue on. So right here, we already read this, the daily offerings. Alright, so Numbers 28, 
Numbers 28, section 1, the daily offerings. And the Most High Ahiah spoke unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel, and say unto them, My offering and my bread for my sacrifices made by fire, for a sweet savour unto me, shall ye observe to offer unto me in their due season. And thou shalt say unto them, This is the offering made by fire, which ye shall offer unto the Most High, two lambs of the first year without spot day by day, for a continual, continual burnt offering. The one lamb shalt thou offer in the morning, and the other lamb shalt thou offer at evening. So one at morning sunrise, and the other at evening. And a tenth part of an ephah, of flour, for a meat offering, mingled with the fourth part of an of an hen of beaten oil. It is a continual burnt offering, which was ordained in Mount Sinai for a sweet savour, a sacrifice made by fire unto the Most High Ahiah, and the drink offering thereof shall be the fourth part of an hen for the one lamb. And the holy place shalt thou cause the strong wine to be poured unto the Most High Ahiah for a drink offering. And the other lamb shalt thou offer at evening, at the meat offering of the morning. So, and as the drink offering thereof, thou shalt offer it, a sacrifice made by fire, of a sweet savour unto the Most High Ahiah. The Sabbath Offerings And on the Sabbath day, two lambs of the first year without spot, and two tenth deals of flour for a meat offering, mingled with oil, and the drink offering thereof. This is the burnt offering of every Sabbath, beside the continual burnt offering and his drink offering. So that's what we're supposed to be doing on the Sabbath day. If you can't do it, do what you can. You know what I'm saying? Give from your heart, give from your spirit. As you go and have trust and faith, everything will fall in line. So the monthly moon, the new moon offerings. So weekly Sabbaths, um, monthly Sabbaths now. And in the beginnings of your months, the new months, ye shall, the, the new moon, ye sh, new moons, ye shall offer a burnt offering unto the Most High Spirit, two young bullocks and one ram, like for a sin offering seven lambs of the first year without spot, and three-tenth deals of flour for a meat offering, mingled with oil for one bullock, and two-tenth deals of flour for a meat offering, mingled with oil for one rum, and, and a several-tenth deal of flour mingled with oil for a meat offering unto one lamb, for a burnt offering of a sweet savour, a sacrifice made by fire unto the Most High Spirit, and their drink offering shall be half. It shall be half in hen of wine unto a bullock, and the third part of in hen unto a ram, and the fourth part of in hen unto a lamb. This is the burnt offering of every moon, new moon, throughout the months of the year, months of the year. And one kid of the, the goats for a sin offering unto the Most High Spirit shall be offered beside the continual burnt offering and his drink offering. Now the Passover. And in the fourteenth day of the first month is the Passover of the Most High Spirit. And in the fifteenth day of this month is the feast. Seven days shall unleavened bread be eaten. And the first day shall be in holy convocation. Ye shall do no manner of servile work therein, but ye shall offer a sacrifice made by fire for a burnt offering unto the Most High, two young bullocks and one ram, and seven lambs of the first year. They shall be unto you without blemish, and their meat offering shall be of um, flour mingled with olive oil. Three-tenth deals shall ye offer for a bullock and two tenth deals for a ram, a several tenth deal shalt thou offer for every lamb, throughout the seven lambs, and one goat for a sin offering, to make an atonement for you. Ye shall offer these beside the burnt offering in the morning and at sunrise, 
which is for a continual burnt offering. After this manner ye shall offer daily, throughout the seven days, the meat of the sacrifice made by fire, of a sweet savour unto the Lord, Ahiah, sure, Ahiah. It shall be offered beside the continual burnt offering, and his drink offering, and on the seventh day ye shall have an holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work. The Feast of Weeks Also in the day of the first fruits, when ye bring a new meat offering unto the Most High Ahiah, after your weeks be out, ye shall have an holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work, but ye shall offer the burnt offering for a sweet savour unto the Most High Ahiah. Two young bullocks, one ram, seven lambs of the first year, and their meat offering of flour mingled with oil, three tenth deals unto one bullock, two tenth deals unto one ram, a several tenth deal unto one lamb throughout the seven lambs, and one kind and one kid of the goats to make an atonement for you. This for the feast of weeks. Ye shall offer them beside the continual burnt offering, and his meat offering. They shall be unto you without blemish in their drink offerings. So everything pretty much makes sense. Very, very simple. Alright, let's continue on. I believe that was the only part for that. Alright, so we got this one in numbers. One. Two. Alright, two. Alright, so we're almost done concerning um, the Sabbath. Uh, part five, what I'm going to show you guys is like a little wrap up. I may not include the note in it because it's obvious like um, what we're supposed to do, but I may include a wrap up anyway. So there might be seven parts to this um, video, seven pieces. Um, but yeah, I'm going to teach you guys a little bit more to solidify everything and show you the video the little two minute video I was telling you about so you guys can get a hang of what it is and at least practice doing this mentally on the days of Sabbath and stuff because it's just as holy and um, so you can you know s remain in the covenant and in the protection of the most high higher so numbers 30 I mean numbers 20 um, pardon me Alright, Numbers 29, the Feast of Trumpets. And in the seventh month, on the first day of the month, so in the seventh month, from the first month, on the first day of the month, the new moon, ye shall have in holy convocation, ye shall do no servile work. It is a day of blowing the trumpets unto you, and ye shall offer a burnt offering um, for a sweet savour unto the Most High Ahiah. So once again, you'll be um, mixing the bullock and all that stuff. So you can go ahead and read that again if you want to. This is in Numbers 29. Bada bing, bada boom. Yeah, we already know all this right here. Right here is important though. The Feast of Tabernacles. Alright, this I will go ahead and read if I was you. I'm going to go ahead and save that. The Feast of Tabernacles. It tells us um, how much animals we're supposed to um, sacrifice on what day. And what offering it is and stuff like that for the tabernacle. And by the time that's done, something extremely holy happens. So let's go ahead and go down there. see what's on the next page all right this is important numbers 30 laws concerning vows and Moses spoke unto the heads of the tribes concerning the children of Israel saying this is the thing which the Most High had commanded if a man vow a vow unto the Most High or swear an oath to bind his soul with a bond he shall not break his word he shall do according to all the that all that proceeded out of his mouth. If a woman also vow a vow unto the Most High Ahiah, 
and bind herself by a bond, being in her father's house in her youth, and her father hear her vow, and her bond wherewith she hath bound her soul, and her father shall hold his peace at her. Then all her vows shall stand, and every bond wherewith she hath bound her soul shall stand. So and by, if she bind herself by a bond, being in her father's house in her youth, and her father hear her vow and her bond wherewith she hath bound, um, bound her soul, and her father shall hold his peace at her, then all her vows shall stand. If he doesn't, then it won't. And every bond wherewith she hath bound her soul shall stand. But if her father disallow her in the day that he heareth, not any of her vows or any of her bonds wherewith she hath bound her soul shall stand. And the Most High Ahiah shall forgive her because her father disallowed her. And if she had at all in husband when she vowed or uttered out of her lips wherewith she, she bound her soul and her husband heard it and held his peace at her in the day that he heard it, then her vow shall stand and her bonds wherewith she bound her soul shall stand. But if her, if, but if her husband disallowed her on the day that he heard it, and husband can mean a debtor, a creditor, or a husband and wife can mean a debtor and creditor relationship, someone who made a vow and a promise to be with each other, like employee and employer, a trustee and a trustor, grantor and a grantee. You see? Trustor and a trustee. So let's continue on. Now that we know that that is a vow and represents marriage. Through paperwork. But if her husband disallowed her on the day the sunrise that he heard it. Then he shall make her vow which she vowed. And that which she uttered with her lips. Wherewith she bound her soul. Of none effect. Null and void. Ab initio. And the Most High shall forgive her. But every vow of a widow and of her that is divorced, wherewith they have bound their souls, shall stand against her. And if she vowed in her husband's house, or bound her soul by a bond with an oath, and her husband heard it, and held his peace at her, and disallowed her not, then all her vows shall stand, and every bond wherewith she bound her soul shall stand. But if her husband had utterly made them void on the day he heard them, then whatsoever proceeded out of her lips concerning her vows or concerning the bond of her soul shall not stand. Her husband um, hath made them void, and the Most High Ahiah shall forgive her. Every vow and every binding oath to afflict the soul, her husband may establish it, or her husband may make it void. But if her husband altogether hold his peace at her from day to day, then he established, established it all her vows, or all her bonds, which are upon her. He confirmeth them, because he held his peace at her in the day that he heard them. Like silence means consent. But if he shall anyways make them void after that he had heard them, then he shall bear her iniquity. These are the statutes which the Most High Ahiah commanded Moses between a man and his wife, between the father and his daughter, being yet in her youth, in her father's house. All right, so we're near the end. Alright, so part 6 is going to be pretty fun. That's where we're going to be using a little bit more of the map to wrap it up and conclude everything and um, shut it down by at least part 7. So, um, blessed be those who stuck with me to this point. I've actually seen all the videos up to this point. I know they're lengthy. I know it's a lot. But, um, it's very easy. It's, it's simple. So now it's explaining on Deuteronomy 16 is speaking about the feast of the Passover again the month of Abib which is Nisan so it told us the month everything no leaving bread blah 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 so we know all this we love 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 this
Tabernacles again. All right, judges and justice. Judges and officers, shalt thou make thee in all thy gates, which the Most High, the Most High, well, um, pardon me, the Most High, Ahia, giveth thee throughout thy, throughout thy tribes, and they shall judge the people with just judgment. And they don't do that nowadays. That's Deuteronomy 16, section 18. Thou shalt not rest judgment. Thou shalt not respect persons. Neither take a gift for a gift. Do blind the eyes of the wise and pervert the words of the righteous. So getting paid to do the work perverts everything. It corrupts you. You shouldn't be getting paid to judge people. Or you're going to want to judge someone and make money. That which is altogether just shalt thou follow, that thou mayest live and inherit the land which the Most High Ahia, the pure white light, giveth thee. So forbidden forms of worship. Thou shalt not plant thee a grove of any trees, near unto the altar of the Most High Ahia, which thou shalt make thee. Neither shalt thou set thee up any image which the Most High, thy Ahia, hated. So no images other than the cherubims, and those aren't um, images, they're actually angels to guard um, the mercy seat and stuff like that. But you're not worshipping the cherubims either. And you don't want to put any picture that, that has nothing to do with the Most High. Matter of fact, no images at all. No images at all if you can. No images at all. And do not do it near trees, because that's wicked. It's like the Wiccans. Don't do it near the tree. Be able to let the sun descend upon you and everything. Alright, so around Deuteronomy 17, it talks about detestable sacrifices. Purge the idolater. So you can actually stone the idolater to death. Their idol worshipping, destroy their stuff. Courts of law, election and duties of kings, which are presidents. So Deuteronomy, um, around Deuteronomy 17 teaches a lot. And here are the provisions for the priests and the Levites. Sorcery forbidden, a new prophet. We're pretty much done with this section. Cities of refuge. The testimony of witnesses. Laws of warfare. So this, this prepares you for everything, how to build a nation. The atonement for an unsolved murder. Marrying a captive woman. Inheritance rights of the firstborn. A rebellious son. Cursed is anyone hung on a tree. Wow. Various laws. So check out Deuteronomy. There's just so much stuff that is said in there. All right, let's go back a little bit to wrap it up. We're going to move in for part five. All right, so Deuteronomy, the seventh year, Sabbath. Generosity and lending and giving, um, being a debtor and creditor. Release of Hebrew servants, we shall be released. Firstborn animals. Uh, so obviously this is very important. Clean. All right. So check out Deuteronomy. There's a lot more great information in that section. For right now, I just want to say thank you guys for being here with me. Um, check in with me on part five. We're going to continue on our lesson. And um, I'm going to wrap up um, what I have to share with you guys and the message that I have to deliver. I thank you all for being here with me. May the creator, the most high, higher, the pure white light essence that I am continue to bless you within. Aman. I affirm. Shalom.